Hello and welcome to this journey through Uma. Now I call it a journey because, well, Uma's the gift that keeps on giving. And what I mean by that is every time you think you, you know everything about it, all of a sudden you discover a, a new feature that makes life easier. And also it's being developed by a bunch of really enthusiastic guys who keep adding more toys and treats to it. So no matter how experienced you are or how new you are to it, there's an awful lot to learn. It doesn't take an awful long time to get things up and running, but once you get a taste for it, I can guarantee you'll want to know more and more. So in this video, we're going to have a look at that journey in its entirety, just so you can see where this series is going and what you're going to learn along the way. Now along this journey, there are three key milestones or eureka moments when suddenly you realize that you know what's going on and you can control this thing. So let's have a look at each of those in turn. Number one, what is Uma and why would I want to use it? Well, in a nutshell, Uma is a runtime character generation and modification system. And what this means is you can generate characters, you can mess around with their facial features, change how they look, you can also mess around with their body shape, you can also add and remove clothing. Now this is fantastic because you've just found a free system that will allow you to start making your own character creator and making your own loot system and then you can crack on with that World of Warcraft beating MMO that you're going to make single-handedly. So why would I choose to learn how to use Uma? I mean, there are a few other systems out there that can do roughly the same thing, no? Well, not really. At its core, Uma has three very, very clever components that do some pretty special things. Firstly, we've got a very clever skinned mesh combiner. Now, what a skinned mesh is, it's basically a skeleton with the triangles wrapped around it that make up your character. So you move the bones inside a character and the arms and legs deform and make it look like it's behaving like a human being. Um, these things are reasonably intensive, but uh, most machines these days can handle quite a few of them. Um, if you want to add an item of clothing with most characters, you need to add another skinned mesh. If you add maybe three, four, five pieces of clothing, you've then got six skinned meshes walking around, all needing individual attention of the computer. Now, this might not seem like an awful lot, but once you get 10, 11, 20 characters moving on screen, that's 20 times six skinned meshes. It starts to become a lot for your machine to handle. Uh, what Uma does, it combines those meshes into the fewest number possible. Uh, if you're clever about it, you can get it combining into one skin mesh. Well, if you think about it, that means you can have six times the amount of characters on screen at once. Hmm. Secondly, we've got our overlay system and material combiners. Now, this allows us to create unique materials by simply layering textures on top of each other. And these are all combined and turned into one. Uh, so, for example, we can take a naked Uma and give them some underwear without ever adding another mesh. However, if we were to add a piece of clothing, that's going to be a completely different texture that's going to sit on a completely different object. Uh, again, this would normally mean more attention from the processor or the graphics card. Uh, however, what Uma does, it will combine all of the textures that are actually on your Uma, clothing, the skin, everything, and it will reduce them to the fewest number possible. Again, if you're very careful about this, you can reduce that to one single texture. And finally, we come to the Uma Skeleton. Now, if you're used to animating characters, you'll be familiar with the humanoid skeleton structure. This is a standard layout for human bones, which is great. It means we can transfer animations from one character to another using Unity's Mechanim system. However, Uma's humanoid skeleton has an awful lot of other bones on top. Now these sit in between the humanoid skeleton and the skinned mesh renderer and allow for all of those adjustments that you can see. So by working with these three systems, we can create super optimized, customizable characters 
for our game. You combine that with all of the assets that are available on the asset store, uh, and yeah, you've got something pretty special. In fact, with a little bit of modeling skill, you can create your own clothing for Umas. You can also remove clothing from other models that you own and convert them to work with Uma. All of which adds up to a pretty impressive system. Done. Is that it? Not quite. Number two. This is a framework. So after you've been playing with Uma for a while and you're happily creating characters, changing clothing, even creating your own clothing for these characters, you suddenly realise that, well, the characters themselves aren't much different from the clothing. The way they go together is the same. So uh, it becomes very clear very quickly that you can make your own characters. In fact, if you look on the asset store, there are several options that have been created by the users that are compatible with Uma. That is, the, the clothing packs should fit them. Now I am oversimplifying it here. Um, actually turning a model into an Uma is really easy. However, the clever bit that the Uma skeleton does, which allows you to morph and change the facial features and the body shape, well, that's not quite so easy. And that does require some, some talent and skill to actually rig that. But that's not the end of the world. Um, for example, if I only want to change the clothes and optimize my meshes, well, I can do that with Uma. Take a look at this. This is iClone's Izzy character. It's freely available on the Asset Store. It's quite a high poly character. Um, now I've just turned this into an Uma. I haven't changed the rig, so I can't change any of the features, but I can add and remove clothing and have that mesh optimized on the fly. Pretty impressive. Now, if you have the artistic talent, you can take this one step further. What you're looking at here is the work of an artist named Matthew Jeffrey, and he's created these wonderful little hand-painted lead miniature characters where you can change their beards, hats, their clothing. You can then paint them using the overlay system in Uma. It's something completely unique, but it's something that is within the reach of everybody. All of this from a completely free community-built add-on. And there you have it. That's Uma. Well, nope, there's still more. Number three, anything is possible. So somewhere along this journey, you've probably encountered some of the additional components that have been added to Uma. Uh, for example, we've got the expression player, which can allow you to do lip syncing and add a little bit of life to your characters. Or we've got the physics component, which allows you to turn your Umas into ragdolls when they die horribly, horribly. In fact, you can add almost any code you like to an Uma to make it do some unusual things. And when you really start to think about it, you're not stuck with humanoids. So we can have Uma horses, like this one, where we could change what armor they're wearing. Or we could even go into non biological creatures. For example, here's a, an Uma aeroplane with adjustable wings. That was just an experiment, but it's very, very easy to imagine uh, something like an Uma car with interchangeable wheels and body panels. Once you let your imagination run wild, it's not a big stretch to imagine Uma vegetation, or maybe procedurally generated Uma cities, all optimized down to single meshes with single materials. All of this, coupled with the very helpful and talented Uma community, is why I love this. And it's why I want to take you on that journey over the course of this series. So I'd just like to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. These are the people who made this video possible. And if you'd like to support me, please click the link that appears at the end of this video. I'll see you next time.